Okay, um, we have a new exponent rule in this chapter. b to the p over q can be rewritten as the qth root, so the bottom of the fraction on the fractional exponent becomes the root. So it becomes the qth root of b to the exponent p. So that p still stays there. Another way to write it is the qth root of b to the p and keep the p inside the radical. Now, let's use that rule either backwards or forwards or whatever in simplifying. First of all, 81, I need to rewrite it. I could use 9 squared. I could also use 3 to the 4th. 3 to the 4th is the better choice. The smaller the base, the better. So when you have a choice, go for the smaller number. So 3 to the 4th to the 3 fourths. Now use your exponent rules. Power to a power, multiply. 4 times 3 over 4, 4 is cancel. 3 to the 3rd, 27. All right, let's do another one. 25, how can I rewrite that? 5 squared, you knew that, right? To the negative 3 halves. Power to a power, multiply. 5 to the negative 3 equals 1 over 5 to the 3rd equals 1 over 125. Now, this answer is good if you want a fraction. Sometimes the directions say no fraction answers. In that case, you would stop right here once you have it in exponent form. All right, let's do the next one, 9 to the 2.5. Well, the 9 part is easy. That's 3 squared. What do I do to the 2.5? Any ideas? Yeah, make it a fraction. 3 squared to the 5 halves, 3 to the 5th, 243. That was easy. All right, here's a trickster one here. Okay, we're going to keep the negative 3 fourths out of the way for a minute and just deal with the inside. How am I going to write that 81? 9 squared or 3 to the 4th? Right, 3 to the 4th. And then that 3 means I have an exponent of 1 third. If that was a 5 or a 5th root, I would do exponent 1 fifth. All right, let's do our power to a power rule. So we're going to keep our fraction temporarily. So we've got 3 fourths out here, and we have 1 over 3 to the 4 thirds. Okay, I'm going to move that to the top of the fraction. You know that fraction rule, right? So now 3 to the negative 4 thirds raised to the power negative 3 fourths. Hmm, power to a power, what do I do? Multiply. Negative times negative is positive. 4 thirds times 3 fourths is 1. 3 to the 1 is 3. So this rule ends up being quite helpful for some of the problems that we have to do. All right, now I'm going to do a couple more problems for you that you'll really understand the value of that rule when you see the solving that we get to do because of this. Um, all right, here's one here. Square root of 1 third times cube root of 9. Well, the 9 I can be, be written as 3 squared, so that can be 3 squared to the 1 third. This 1 third can be written as 3 to the negative 1, and what exponent am I going to use to get rid of that root? 1 half, yes, yeah, square root is 1 half. Prior to this, I couldn't multiply these two things together because the roots are different. This is a square root and this is a cube root, so you can't multiply them. So you change them to fractional exponents and then you can simplify them. So then the next step, power to a power, so this becomes 3 to the negative 1 half times 3 squared times 1 third is 3 to the 2 thirds. And then what do you do? You have to add the exponents, right? Well, two-thirds, one-half is the same thing as, let's change to common denominator, six. All right? So that would be three over six, and that would be four over six. And what do I do with the exponents? Add them. So I get three to the one-six. So the answer to this problem is the sixth root of three, or three to the one-sixth. You need to pay attention to directions. Sometimes they say, put it back in radical form. This would be the answer. If they say, leave it in exponent form, this would be the answer. Both of those 
are equivalent. Okay, let's do another one. Um, what if you had um, cube root of 9 times square root of 3? Well, I can't multiply these because the roots are different. If it was cube root of 9 times cube root of 3, I could multiply and say cube root of 27. But I can't because the roots are different. So, 3 squared to the 1 third times 3 to the 1 half, right? So then I have 3 to the 2 thirds times 3 to the 1 half equals 3 to the 2 thirds plus 1 half. I have to add those exponents, right? So 4 over 6 plus, what's that one? 3 over 6, 7 over 6. So now I have 3 to the 7 over 6, right? which could be written as the sixth root of 3 to the seventh. Oh boy, if the seven threes, one can come out. I could write this as 3 times the sixth root of 3. You know why that happens? Well, you could think of this, this is really stretching the point, but 3 to the seventh means seven threes. 2, 3. 4, 5, 6, 7, right? Sixth root means every time I have three things, six sing things the same, I can take the 3 out for that. So 3, 6 through to 3 is the answer. All right. Now, um, sometimes the directions say write in exponential form. If that was the case, you could have left it as 3 to the 7, 6. All right. <clears throat> Let's try another 